Hello to all my Jaguar boys and whoever POP'd on the 4th of March. Congratulations on passing out of uh, BMT. It must have been a tiring but fun time in Takong. Uh, so now I'm sure by the time this video comes out, uh, you guys are having your block leave. So yeah, this video is my SES guide for dummies because some of you guys may be going to command school, um, may be going to SES. So this video is to kind of like share some of my experiences and like uh, get you guys prepped for your next chapter in your NS journey. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so how to survive SES 101. This video will be split into two parts. I've got my notebook here. Uh, I wrote down some points to talk about. So first part will be surviving foundation term. And the second part of this video will be surviving infantry pro term. So, first off, to survive found term number one, you gotta be prepared for different management styles, uh, especially if you were from a uh, Sir Koi uh, in BMT. Let's say the OC is a uh, is an uh, officer, and the OC is a uh, Enchik. The management styles will be pretty different. Um, so for Enchiks, they are more old-fashioned in their thinking. Uh, you know, obviously they're more experienced. So just be prepared for like a change of culture uh, or the way of running the company if you were from a, a officer Koi in BMT. Okay, so number two, there will be new weapons and equipment to learn. Uh, so please pay attention during uh, the trainings. The new weapons include the Matador, the saw, and the M203, which is like a grenade launcher. So the M203 is basically like your SAR-21, the IA drills are the same just that uh, there is the inclusion of the, the grenade launcher at the bottom of the, the handguard. So yeah, you just need to learn and know what to do um, for the grenade launcher. That's just the new thing for the M203. But the Metador and the saw, oh my goodness. The Metador, if you're a Metador gunner, good luck to you. Uh, saw, at first, I didn't really get how to use it. Uh, I found it quite a hassle. You know, because of all the IA drills, it's completely different from um, the SAR-21. But when I got posted to BMT, I was a saw firer for the ISAD, uh, which is the Infantry Small Arms Demonstration. So the saw is a pretty cool weapon. I kind of fell in love with it um, during the ISAD. Uh, and turns out the IA drills weren't as hard as I thought it was. You know, with more practice, uh, you'll get the hang of it. So yeah, next new equipment include the Claymore, um, the Trip Flare, the Heartlander tools, and the UO CE equipment. I'm pretty sure I talked about some of these equipment in my uh, SES videos, so if you want, you can go and check them out. So number three, you got to uphold your standards because you are no longer recruits, you are commanders to be. So in command school, you are most probably gonna hear this sentence quite a lot. You're going to be a commander already if you yourself can't uphold the standards how can you expect your men or recruits to have any standards which really makes a lot of sense because if you can't do it yourself how can you expect your guys under you to to have their standards so it's like kind of like double standards lah. so you have to set a good example for the guys under you so as a recruit, maybe we close one eye, you know, you just transition from civilian life to army life. That's why we don't really go so hard on you. But when you go to command school, you need to know that um, standards is a very important thing uh, as, a NS, as an NS guy. So like I said, this is no longer BMT, you know, where we are teaching you all the basics. Um, and like we give you chance after chance if you mess up. Um, this is a time in SES, you know, where you're expected to know what you're doing and you're expected to do it right and do it good. So, one example is force prep. Um, like, Jaguar company, we didn't have the strictest, uh, is that a word, strictest? We didn't have the strictest uh, force preps. But when you go to SES, be prepared for like turnouts and like more strict force preps. So, yeah. Last but not least, number four, you gotta understand that different schools have different cultures. So I was from School Tree, Mohican's company in uh, SES. What I mean by different cultures are things like, you know, late bookouts, camo on and off during outfields, 
uh, and some welfare. So like welfare, example, knights got to order in, order in like McDonald's or like whatever food they want. But Mohicans, we didn't get a chance to. For exercise long strike, which is the four day, three night outfield in Takong, my koi told us to camel on. But while we were walking from point to point, we saw other companies and they didn't have camel on at all. And we, and we were like, what? Like, how come we have to, you know, go through the trouble of camoing on, but they don't have to. So, yeah, you just got to get used to it. Like, different companies have different um, practices. So, that's the end of part one. So, now it's part two, surviving infantry pro term. If you get posted out after foundation term, then good for you. Uh, but if you're staying for infantry pro term, then I guess I wish you all the best. You know, uh, it's definitely a step up from foundation term. So you got to prepare yourself both physically and mentally. So first off, you got to mentally prep yourself for a shit ton of outfields. If I count correctly, it's six in pro term. So first, there is a three day, two night, uh, non overnight uh, conventional ops outfield. Number two is exercise gypsy. Again, it's two day, one night, non overnight, just a two days, uh, navigation exercise but it's, again it's still kind of outfield because you're out uh, in the training area third it's a three day two night urban ops this one is overnight number four five day four night exercise grand slam in Tekong and number five four day three night exercise long stride also in Tekong and last but not least five day four night exercise warrior um, around Singapore honestly I'm not an outfield person as well but just enjoy the time with your friends uh, just make memories there and just uh, go with the flow yeah just do your best and at the end of the day it will all be over so number two um, this is a very very important tip uh, which is don't man mode and don't be selfish this is very very important for all the outfields in command school there will be different section stores that is going to be split among the whole section rather than the, the normal fuel pack and LBS that you carry in BMT. Uh, now you carry your fuel pack, your assault bag, your LBS, everything you will bring to outfield. And throughout the day, you will carry your assault bag and your fuel packs will be left at your harboring area. Um, so the section stores are split based on your appointment. So like section commander, group 2 IC, uh, group 3 IC, um, metador gunner, saw gunner, etc. Different roles carry different equipment. So Everyone is carrying a heavy load. Everyone is going to be tired. Um, but if you go full man mode and only care about yourself, then you know everyone is going to suffer and the team cannot perform properly. Like, for example, if you're only carrying a SAR-21, which is the lightest out of all the weapons, and you think your load is heavy, just imagine the method of Garner. So he has to carry the Matador, he has to carry a SAR-21, he has to carry his heavy assault bag. The saw gunner, the saw gun is quite heavy, it's quite big. Uh, M203 is a killer, it's super duper heavy. So yeah, if you want to be selfish, then um, I'm sure no one will like you. But please just spare a thought for your friends. Um, everyone is shagged, uh, everyone is tired. So if you can, please go and help as much as you can. So as long as everyone isn't selfish, everyone is playing ball, everyone is helping one another, then obviously the team can progress through the outfield and as well as the individual missions more smoothly. So number three, you know, form good bonds with your section mates and also platoon mates, of course. Uh, it's kind of linked to the previous point about um, not man bowling and not being selfish. You know, because when you step out and help more, you know, you're not selfish, you're more dependable, then people will tend to, you know, uh, bond better with you. So, for me, a good bond with your section mates is, I guess, one of the best, if not the best way to push through infantry pro term. At least for me, I feel, because when you enjoy being around each other, then, um, you know, you're more comfortable. And the, the booking blues won't be as strong, you know? like you can kind of look forward to booking in because you know that your friends are there with you. So number four will be Gypsy, Exercise Gypsy PTSD because like I said, it's a two day, one night um, 
navigation exercise on the first day before we even started it was pouring like heavily head to toe wet uniform wet fuel pack wet and heavy it just brings down the morale you know and we we know that it was gonna be a long day ahead of us and before it even started it started raining so yeah that's just that's just a no-go and also when it finally stopped raining uh, about midday like 12 p.m and we started the exercise we got lost like my group got lost for more or less the entire day and we didn't even find a single checkpoint so that just brought down the morale even more because even with Sergeant Kelvin walking with, with us on the first day we cannot find any checkpoints so we couldn't imagine like the second day when it was gonna be just us like how it was gonna how it was gonna be like so yeah exercise gypsy is something something that I will never forget and just pray that you know when you guys get to that stage it doesn't rain all right so this will be the last point you guys have to understand that exercise grand slam and exercise warrior is not the same as your conventional uh, BMT outfield so like I told some of you guys some of my Jaguar boys during route march um, your BMT outfield is actually considered very very easy um, it's just training in the day seven hours of uninterrupted rest at night uh, but for command school I, I think for OCS it's like that as well uh, but for command school exercise grand slam exercise warrior five days four night is more of missions during the night like you you wake up at 11 p.m start moving off at 12 a.m walk to your format point for about four to six hours ish so from 12 a.m to 6 a.m you're just walking in the dark through the jungle uh and then six to about seven plus you carry out your mission seven plus to eight you go to your harboring area eight to maybe lunch time you rest lunch time to evening training and then the whole cycle repeats for five days and four nights so yeah um definitely tiring and for exercise grand slam it was the first time that we were doing it so our bodies weren't really used to it like exercise grand slam is more shack than exercise warrior because exercise warrior you already know kind of know what to expect so basically in a nutshell command school outfields are more shack you know you, you get less sleep so like i said don't be selfish don't always man mode it's okay to be tired you know everyone is tired but if you have enough energy then please feel free to step up and help your guys so that's all for this video i hope you guys like these uh, tips and pointers that uh, i've listed out for you if you guys found it useful please give this video a thumbs up uh, subscribe if you haven't uh, thank you guys for almost 600 subscribers that is just crazy um, but yeah once again congratulations on passing out of uh, BMT all the best for those going to command school all the best for those going to unit uh, to those going to RSEF uh, please I hope you guys can do better than me and not fail on my last flight uh, in AGC so yeah that's all for this video thank you for watching and see you guys in the next one bye